and I was so terrified. I didn't know what to do. I was so scared. There's a presence of something in this building. And I feel, I'm not afraid, I'm always comfortable, but I will feel a soft moving presence coming up almost like I want to turn and I feel someone has to be looking over my shoulder. pitch black in the music hall, and there's lights flashing. I was so scared because I didn't know what was going on. And I was like, what? I swear to God, there's some, somebody was walking with me. I really, truly think that she's here. I'm never going there at night again. Vaudeville was popular in the United States in the 1890s and flourished until the 1930s. In the seat of the pants style of the time, a good night of vaudeville served up something for every palate. From performing pooches to feats of phenomenal strength. Proctor's own theaters in Albany, Troy, and Cahoes gave birth to the careers of many vaudeville stars. Performers like Eva Tanguay, who started out by playing in amateur nights as a child at the Williams and Powers Theater in Troy and right here at Proctor's Theater in Cahoes. She went on to become a very famous vaudevillian actress. She was in the Ziegfeld Follies. Um, she, she had a personal relationship with Sophie Tucker, and um, she was kind of the Madonna of her time period. She wore low-cut things and short things and feathers and beads and boas and, and all kinds of things and would sing outrageous songs that were considered kind of naughty for the time period. Eva became a star when vaudeville was at its zenith. She sang songs which were daring for the time. Once she fashioned a costume of dollar bills. She went on to be the highest female vaudevillian player and uh, was with Siegfried. When I mean, was right you at mean the, the highest top. Paid? Highest paid. Highest paid in her in her profession and did did work for Siegfried. Um, was known to be very generous. Was also known to wear very expensive dresses, costumes, but very body risque by the day's standards. Her theme song was, I don't care. And basically the first two lines are, I don't care what folks say about me. And so she was often billed as the I don't care girl. When vaudeville ended, she didn't make the transition over to continue in theater. And she died in the 40s in California in relative poverty. But for all her stardom in Hollywood, all the glitz and glamor that came with her success, Eva's heart was always at the beautiful Cahoes Music Hall, where, they say, the spirit of Eva Tanguay plays tricks on those who grace its stage. Rumor has it that she's come back here, that this is where she got her start, this is where she's happy, this is where she feels it's home, so she's come back to this musical because this musical is still here for her to come back to. I come in here frequently maybe a half hour, 40 minutes before a rehearsal. I'll have a director's table set up down in the pit. And I feel, I'm not afraid, I'm always comfortable, but I will feel a soft moving presence coming up almost like I want to turn and I feel someone has to be looking over my shoulder. I remember one night in particular uh, that was New Year's Eve and we had a function here at the hall and I was the last one out of the building and I made sure the building was buttoned up tight because I knew it being the holiday weekend, no more was going to be around. And it was, all the lights were off, all the doors were locked, that was that. And I went home to, to clean up and, and uh, change because my wife and I were going to a, a, a New Year's Eve party. And as I drove by the music hall on the way to the party, I noticed that the building was lit up like a Christmas tree. And I got a little concerned because I said, oh my God, someone got into the building. Well. Discretion is the better part of valor. I said, I'm not going to Billy by myself. So I went over to the police station and got one of Cahosa's finest. And uh, we went through the building from top to bottom carefully. There was no one here. And I couldn't understand how anybody could have gotten in because no one said they had gotten in and there was tight key control. So I can't explain what happened. So we just closed the lights off, locked the building again, walked away. 
supposedly second row, 108, 109, and when the light comes from that window, it shines right there. It was in the middle of the afternoon, and the sun was shining through, through the crack in the curtains and shining right on this particular spot where originally the dowser had said there's a spirit of presence there and the sun was shining right there and you know of course this is an old building the dust was was circling and swirling in, in the light and and the man was convinced we were seeing some sort of spirit there and i'm thinking we're looking at dust but you know <laughs> the friday the 13th the night of our clumsy cluster show i was it was intermission and I was getting ready to go back on stage so I was getting in my line for my cue and I was walking with my friend Elisa and she went to go talk to her friend and I was walking up the stairs and slowly I just saw something peeking out of a window and I, w I got closer to see what it was and I just saw this big really big purple hand and it was just sticking there waving its hand like this and all of a sudden it started going like this and it was I started screaming and I was so terrified, I didn't know what to do, I was so scared. I don't think she's ever done anything seriously bad. Like, she moves stuff around, she likes to play in the elevator a lot, and it freaks me out sometimes. I have a very hard time believing in ghosts. However, when you are in this building, particularly at night, and if you're in this building alone, there's a presence of something in this building. We can only imagine her as she must have been, prancing across the stage, legs kicking high, singing in her husky voice. Could the spirit of the one-time queen of vaudeville be present here? Look around. The next time you see a swirl of dust, a soft glowing light, even perhaps a purple hand waving at you, don't be afraid. It's just the ghost of Eva Tanguay.